Hello and welcome at London Valves 2023. We are here today to discuss the latest data on transcatheter tricuspid valve replacement. That comes quite timely because we now have the first valve approved, the Evoque valve. And I'm delighted to have with me here Mariana Adamo. Before we go into the data, I would like to hear your perspective. You're not only an interventionalist, but also a heart failure specialist. What's the most burning clinical problem of patients with TR? Uh, as, as you know, uh, Philip, uh, tricuspid regurgitation is a very complex disease and unfortunately we don't have uh, a medical therapy, specific medical therapy for these patients. And uh, we have diuretics that can help in reducing congestion, but we don't have neurohormonal drugs uh, really effective on uh, these patients. So uh, the transcatheter uh, therapies can have a major role. And so we have new evidence, as you said. Could you summarize uh, uh, the results of the TRICIN2 trial? Yeah, so the TRICIN2 was the, the first randomized study, the, the first and only in the field of transcatheter tricuspid valve replacement. It was a 2 to 1 randomization. At the moment, we look at an interim analysis of the first 150 patients. There are more data to come, but that analysis that looks both at safety early on at 30 days, but also at effectiveness at six months. And with respect to safety, we can say that there were some maze and given the fact that it is a replacement therapy, but this was clearly less than what we should have expected if patients were to undergo surgical valve replacement. And then, um, and this is extremely encouraging in terms of effectiveness, there was a very thorough analysis. What does TR reduction mean for these patients? And by the way, TR reduction was incredibly homogeneous and robust. So almost everyone ended up with no relevant TR after the valve was put in. And that reduction in TR was clearly associated with better indices of clinical status. So quality of life, NYHA class, six minute walking test, the study um, analysis included a win ratio analysis and the win ratio for the replacement was, was 4.6. So this is a clear and undisputable win for the replacement. So we can say that uh, uh, the procedure is, uh, uh, is uh, acceptable uh, uh, and it's acceptably place, uh, safe, okay? Um, but also is extremely effective. Okay, because uh, almost uh, uh, the majority of the patients has a, a, an abolishment of the TR. But also if we look at the uh, medical therapy arm, uh, basically 80% of patients uh, had uh, still uh, a severe or torrential or massive TR. So this means that, uh, again, medical therapy doesn't work in these patients. And uh, also uh, the reduction, as you said, in uh, tricuspid regurgitation translates uh, in an improvement in the quality of life and symptoms. And uh, in the, uh, regarding the, uh, the improvement in the NIA class, for example, again, if we look at the medical therapy group, uh, most of the patients had in class, NIA class 3 or 4. And this is extremely important to take in mind. Very important. And sometimes we, we are told, and rightly so, we, we also have diuretics to and try to improve the clinical status um, that can be done, but we don't see any improvement in TR in these randomized studies that they show it very nicely. In the field of heart failure studies, there is um, a lot of focus on, on mortality data. Here we look at quality of life, so it's not only about prolonging life, but also improving life. Well, what's your take on, on the role of improving quality of life in the, in the, in the space of heart failure trials? This is a extremely important. Uh, patients with a heart failure, especially patients with advanced heart failure, uh, prefer uh, trading years of life uh, um, uh, with uh, uh, a better quality of life. So uh, quality of life is extremely important for our patient and also heart failure community uh, are recognizing this, uh, uh, this point. And uh, um, in particular, the KCCQ, uh, quite, um, the KCCQ is the tool that is uh, the most used and approved and, uh, and recognized as a valid uh, tool to assess quality of life in heart failure patients and in the uh, tricin uh, uh, basically, all patients had heart failure because they had a, a previous heart failure hospitalization and or sign and symptoms of right heart failure. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a quite sick patient cohort to start with, absolutely. Exactly. It's encouraging to hear that also the, 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 the heart failure community, that they're shifting a little bit and they're accepting that a quality of life matters for the patient. So to, to wrap up, we have a new valve 
which is available now, the Evoke valve. We can not only repair, but also replace the tricuspid valve in those patients who are symptomatic and have severe or even greater TR. We can treat now more patients who could not have benefited from any transcatheter approach. We see good safety, we see excellent efficacy, and we see that that matters for quality of life in these patients. And this is not the end. There's more data to come. The full cohort also looking at heart clinical endpoints at one year, and we eagerly await to see the data and discuss them in one year's time.